In the last tutorials, we have discussed about machine learning classification model. We are talking about the supervised learning and now it is about the regression model. Now we have started to discuss about the regression model. Please visit www.aisandam.com for more details and also you could visit our blog or you could visit our YouTube channel GitHub link or anyhow to know something more about the activities that we are that performing these days. Sport vector regression. You know, regression as well as uh, the what we say uh, it is uh, classification are quite different from each other. Uh, first of all, in the next slide I will show you what is the difference between sport vector regression and classification. Simply the difference between regression and classification. Okay, uh, if you want to have a categorical prediction, to go for the classification model, and if you have some continuous prediction, to go for the regression model. For example, in the below, I have shown if there is uh, you want to predict the color of a ball, so it is a qualitative representation, not a quantitative. But if I say you want to predict the number of pupils, the number, the continuous for a continuity or the continuous data when we have to predict as an outcome, then we go for the regression model. So when you see like a stocks data, it is not categorical, it is a continuous form. So you have to go for the regression model. If I say you want to predict whether a particular person is having a disease or not, so this is a categorical, whether if you want to predict the color of a ball, red, green, blue or green, you go for the, that is a classification model. So uh, in this slide, I am showing you the sport vector and the difference between the sport vector regression and PRL. This is just a simple plot to show the regression. Uh, there is no more significance of that. You just understand that here is the data and uh, in the second it is the uh, target. So this is what we need to understand. So data as well as the training. Then the types of regression. Today we will learn about the epsilon, mu, least scale and linear regression. Because I have shown you the way how to predict the data, uh, how to classify the data, how to train the model. So these things could be common for all the types of uh, uh, models like whether it is a classification or regression. Uh, this video is all about the basics of regression and, how, and what types of regressions are there uh, so that it is very easy for us to choose the type of a regression model okay so the first one is if you uh, can discuss it is the epsilon then it is a new then it is a least square and then it is a linear now going to the epsilon see theory of this regression is very important because you will come to know many terms like cost gamma epsilon which will make your concepts very strong and when you will do the tuning of parameters you will definitely learn the great points from this video. See, epsilon regression means there is no control on how the data points will become the sport vector. So this is a very good answer. Now, uh, you know the two things are there. The gamma function have no control on which data points will become the sport vector. So, this will be, this is the concept of the cost function because it is only the cost function which suggests the model that which data points can be a sport vector. But in epsilon, you can control the amount of the error because if I discuss about the epsilon, it defines the margin of penalty or tolerance where no penalty is given to the error. So when I discuss about the epsilon, I say uh, the concept is regarding the control of error but there is no control over which over the sport vectors so if you want to control the number of sport vectors you have to go for the new regression which is based on the cost function so if i am talking about the gamma function it signifies that which points will tell the decision boundary or on which points the decision boundary will depend for example if our value of a gamma is high we say the decision boundary will depend on the closer point while if the value of a gamma is small the decision boundary will depend on the far away points. 
okay uh, if i talking about the cost if the value of a cost is high it means there is more number of sport factors and it leads to the high variance but if the value of a cost is low it leads to the low variance so a uh, high variance may leads to the overfitting whereas the low variance will leads to the underfitting so we have to choose the value of a cost term and epsilon in a such a way that our model get optimized next is the new regression as i talked about it has the proportionality of the data points which can be termed as the spot vectors like epsilon regression like epsilon regression uh, it uses the hinge laws uh, it say is laws in the cost function so both the epsilon as well as the new regression uses hinge in the cost function basically the training samples which are having some errors so the training samples which are having some errors a uh, new represents the upper bound to them and the vectors which are a sport one it represents the lower bound about on those sections least care uh, so it is a statistical method which depends on the uh, sum of sphere and the aim and the reason of this particular type of regression model is to minimize the sum of sphere if i could uh, talk about the sphere basically it is the scaring the distance between the data point and the line regression line okay and we need to optimize that regression line by minimizing the sum of sphere uh, like in the previous slide if you could see we have seen that hinge function is used uh, here hinge function is used in the cost function but here in the uh, in the least sphere uh, is sphere gradually used in the cost function then comes the last one it is a linear regression it basically it it, it has a linear equation uh, which signifies some type of relation between the independent variable and the dependent variable independent variables are also called as a data point or in somehow we say the predictor value or we also say it's a regressor whereas the dependent variable is called the outcome or the target or in some terminology it is also known as regressor so depends upon uh, what is the name to be uh, chosen by you all have carries a all carries the same meaning uh, if i say y is equal to mx plus c y is a dependent variable or the outcome score it is not a variable it is a outcome score because it is a regression model you get some continuous value m is a regression coefficient and c is a constant it is an equation for a single independent variable in this way you can have the equation for a number of independent variables so thanks for watching the video hope you like it so if you could uh, ask me how you are training the model preprocessing the model classifying the output that is other thing but this video is all about to learn the regression model and how it is different from the classification model so that you have the basic knowledge of the regression and the classification and you should know where you have to for the regression where you have for the classification the steps will remain the same the data gathering the, the data pre processing the feature extraction and selection then classification training and testing and at the last this is uh, going to be prediction so thank you for watching the video have a great day thank you